one of the nice things about the Shah system. Now, so it gives you the Shah, gives you the author as they identified themselves uh, when they ran the commit, the date they did that, and then the, the message that they added. <clears throat> okay, so now there's a couple different things you can do. Um, one is you can do dash dash one line, which gives you that same history in uh, one line per commit. So this, this is a much easier way of looking at large uh, groups of, of history. I want to see all of the commits. So instead of having each one take up 10 lines or something, at minimum, it, they all take up one. Um, so here's the whole history of that branch. Right? Cool. Now, uh, if I said git log uh, issue 53, that gives it a different starting point. So it'll do the same thing. It'll walk through the history of everything that modified that, but since this one doesn't have the merge, right? Everything that modified issue 53 is just those three, so I'm going to list out those three. Uh, if I do IETN, those are the four that modified the IETN branch, right? If I were to switch between issue 53 and IETN, it would switch between these two snapshots, and those are the, the commits that affected that history. Okay, <clears throat> now, the other cool thing you can do is dash dash graph. So, if you combine them, that's one line, that's one line dash dash graph. So, it will actually put in a little ASCII graph of what your history looked like. So, where, so this is the, the left side, right? You can see that they are on the same side, and then this is the right side, and they diverged at that one. You can see the diverge point, and you can see that they merged back in again, right? So, it gives you a nice little ASCII graph on the side if you want to see what the history of your project looked like. Um, uh, you can also add in a couple other things. Decorate will show you where the branch heads are in that graph, and all will say, I want to include all of the branch heads, not just the one I'm currently on. So, in this case, if you want to see every commit that's in your project that's reachable at all, you can say dash dash all, and that will start from every head and walk it and see everything that's reachable from all of your branches, right? And show all of them. Um, so in this case, we have, uh, you can see that IETN is included in this now, where it was before. You can see all of the different branch heads, right? You can see Ration 53, IETN, and Master R, and Head. Um, you can see where all of your branch pointers are, and it's pretty cool. So that means that your, your, your command is git log dash dash one line dash dash grab dash dash decorate dash dash all, which you probably don't want to run all of the time. And I run this all the time because I really like looking at my history this way. So, Instead, you can set up aliases. Git will allow you to set up aliases. So you say dash dash global, so it's always available on every project for you. Uh, alias dot, whatever you want to type out, and then uh, what you want it to expand it to. So now I can just type git lol, and I get uh, all of that, right? Instead of having to put all of those different command line options down. Um, so now I can run this, git lol dash dash all, and that shows me all of them. Right? It's kind of cool. Okay, so that's visualizing your history on the command line. Another way of visualizing your history that I don't have a slide for is git k, which is a typical k program that will do largely the same thing as this. It gives you a little uh, graph, like a little colored graph that shows you where all the different merges and diversions uh, happen. And you can click on any of the lines and get the diff and, and whatnot. Okay, so now, log subsets. Uh, this is a super cool feature of git. Am I out of time? Okay, I'll, I'll do this real fast. Um, no, wait, I have 10 more minutes. Okay, so this is a really cool feature of Git where you can say, this is sort of a graph operation. You can say, this, is, this has to deal with reachability. I want to see every commit that's reachable from branch A that's not reachable from branch B, right? I want to see the difference between the two branches. Um, so show me what is unique to branch A relative to branch B is what that says. So it's not reachable, you put a not sign. So, if I were to say what is the set of commits that matches issue 53 not IPN, it's going to say, okay, everything reachable by issue 53 are these, everything reachable by IPN are these, so remove them all, right? Show me the difference. So the difference are these. These are the ones unique to issue 53 that are, that are not relative to IPN. If you were on IPN and you merged 53, those are the two that would modify your tree. Does that make sense? So this shows you unique commits. Um, so if you were to say that, it'll just show you those two. Now, uh, if you want to say what is in my IPN branch that I have not yet merged into master, even if you've merged into master already at some point, you want to see what's in IPN that's not a master. You can say git log IPN not master, and that'll say everything reach here's everything reachable by IPN. Remove everything reachable by master already, and all we're left with is this one commit. This is the only one that's unique to this branch, right? In relative to master. 
And now if I run git log, I can just see that one, right? Or you can do, there's other options to git log. You can do dash p and see the diff uh, inline, so you can actually see what that commit is. Um, you can do dash dash stat, and I'll show you all the files that were modified and how, how much they were changed rel relatively, um, and, and stuff. So now I can decide if I want to merge in i18 into my master branch, right? So if you're on your master branch, you want to decide if you want to merge that in, that's a really good thing to run uh, before you do it. So now, here's a quick quiz since you have learned all of that perfectly. What does this do? Right. It's what you just fetched that's not merged into your master branch yet. Or it's, it's what is on the master branch of the server the last time you communicated with it, that is not in your master branch yet. So if you run git fetch and you see that new work is in master, it'll show you. It'll say master is updated and is now, or your master is different than it was before you ran git fetch. You can say this, and it will show you the commits. And if you do one line, you can see a sort of a summary of all the, of all of the work. So you can see how much it is. Um, and that, that will show you what's not merged in yet, rather than the whole history of origin master, right? Um, now, what does this do? It's what you haven't yet pushed. Yeah. So, so it's what's on your master branch you have not pushed to the origin yet. And so you can have both. Both can have, if you did a fetch and you've done some work and you fetched out some work and it's the verge, you can have commits on both sides of this, right? And so you can merge it together uh, and, and update the thing or you can just look at them and decide if you want to do that or not or how difficult it's going to do, it's going to be. So, okay. So, that's really useful. The other nice thing, there are other ways of doing this. You might see this with two dots in between them instead. Um, and the difference is, with the, with the two dots, is that you can only put in two sides. It shows you the same thing, but the, there's a problem in that I can never remember which side goes on which side. I literally cannot tell you right now. I think this would be origin master dot dot master. Um, but I, can't, I can never remember it. So I like doing this because it's a lot more explicit. It's easier for me to remember that you say not on the one you don't want. Um, but uh, the other nice part about this is that you can list off multiple of them. You can say uh, git log master itn issue 53 not origin master. What, what is in all of my branches that's not an origin master, right? Uh, or you can say issue 53 that's not in this one and this one. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so finally, uh, merge branches. So if you run a branch and you see a whole bunch of branches, yeah? Just a quick question. Yeah. Three dots is similar. It means uh, unique to one side or the other. So two dots will say unique to one side. So what are the commits that are unique to one of the side? One of the side. Two, three, three dots will say on the left side or the right side. So all the commits that will have to be merged together. Um, you usually, because it's not that useful to just see a list of them, you usually see that with dash dash left right, which will put a little pointer that says which side the equation each commit is, is on, and you can see them all in a list. Um, it's very rare that people use that though. Um, the other place you'll see three dots, this is even getting more confusing. The other place you'll see three dots is with uh, diff. If you wanted to diff master and origin master, you don't do get diff master origin master, because what that would do is a straight diff between the two snapshots. And so what that would look like is it would look like it's removing everything from master and adding everything to origin master, right? Because it needs, because diff shows you the diff on how to make one snapshot look like another snapshot, right? So instead what you do is you put three dots in between and it will tell you the diff between the common commit and, and the second side. So what is unique to one side. So usually what you want to do with diff is get diff uh, master three dots origin master to see what's unique to origin master to get one end. Always use three dots with diff because it's always going to give you what you want. Uh, the the without them you'll just see a bunch of negatives that you don't mean to see. That's normally I teach that thing, but I only have two hours. Luckily for you guys. Um, okay, so merge branch. This is the last thing I want to introduce, uh, and then and then we'll take a couple questions or go drinking or something. Um, you say, if you say git branch dash dash merge, that will show you a list of the branches, your local branches, or um, with dash A or dash R, it'll show you the remote ones as well. It'll show you a list of your branches that are already merged into your current head. So these are deletion candidates, right? Uh, because you've already merged them in, you likely don't need them anymore. 
Um, this is a good way of finding uh, branches on the server. Like if you had an issue 53 on the server and you merged it in and pushed it to master, uh, and you didn't need it on the server anymore, you can see if it's still on the server this way, right? Or if you still have a reference. Uh, but this will this will give you a list of all the branches that you could possibly delete because they're already reachable from wherever your current head is. Um, and this gives you the opposite. These are the ones you probably don't want to delete because they have unique work on them, right? So you can go through each one of these and say git log that branch, not head, and see what's unique to it. And it'll give you something. Okay, so review, git init, creates, it initializes a skeleton of a new git repository in some directory. Uh, git clone, you give a URL. It gives you a full copy, every, basically every bit that is on the server, it puts on your local directory and gives you a checkout so you can start working on it. Git add does three things. It starts tracking content, it stages changes to modified files, and it marks as resolved uh, merge conflicts. Git status shows you the, the, what has been modified on your disk or what's been staged or what is in a conflicted state still if you had merge conflict. Uh, Commit records a snapshot of your index. Uh, branch will list out branches, create branches, delete branches, rename branches. Check out switches between your branches. Uh, merge will merge in two different branches. So you're on one, you merge in another one. It will incorporate all the changes on that branch. Push, you give it a alias or a URL and then a branch and it will push all the changes on that branch up to the alias if it can. Uh, fetch will synchronize your local database with that server, whatever server it is. Um, generally, you only have one, you might have 100. It just depends on how you're running your, your system. And you can just give it an alias or a URL, and it will fetch from that URL. Pull will uh, do a fetch and then an automatic merge. And finally, log will show you a list of commits or differences between branches or, or things like that. Okay, so those are 12 commands. I think that's all that I introduced is the 12. You can do basically everything you need to do in Git with those 12 commands. There's, there are a lot of other ones you can do as well, uh, but those are the basic ones, and hopefully that's a good, a good base for using Git effectively. Um, and, sorry, that's it. Thank you very much. Some modules are hard to use with branches because they it doesn't it keeps its metadata in the working directory, which is sort of a flaw with the system, I think. But so when you switch branches, it doesn't necessarily keep that metadata yeah. properly. Um, so you can do you you can use it if you're not doing a lot of branching, um, or sometimes it works with branching. It depends on how different the branches are, um, or. Uh, you can use like subtree merges or something. There's a chapter in the Pro Git book that goes over different uh, method, uh, different ways of uh, approaching a problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Migration, uh, probably, uh, yeah. So they're again on the Pro Git. Uh, pro, oh, sorry, that should be dot org. I apologize. That should be dot org. The Pro Git dot org uh, site. There's this chapter on Git and subversion and how to do uh, imports properly. There's a couple of different tricks that you want to do that take out the SVN IDs um, that Git will automatically put in there when you, because you can use Git SVN as a bridge to use Subversion as a central server. You use the same thing to do an import, to just do a, one main import, and then you have a Git repository for all your Subversion commits, and you can strip out all those Subversion IDs and change the branches, or tag the branches and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's a chapter in ProGit that goes over just step by step, how to how to import an author list and create the mapping file from the subversion authors to get authors, so that all that comes in properly and things like that. Yeah. You yeah. didn't talk about diff, uh, git diff command much. I assume it's the same as uh, SVN, CVS diff. Right? It's very similar. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to do like dash r. You, you just put the, the the arguments on the command line. Git diff, uh, some branch name. It will diff it to your current head. Or, I just, I'm, I'm a bit confused uh, about git added, like maybe more time to, to 